Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome on this 4th of July weekend. It is so good to be able to be with you all as we come here um, with a little extra excitement. I mean, this is an important weekend for us as a nation and um, we have the opportunity to come and to continue to give thanks and praise to our God and especially this weekend as we celebrate uh, as we celebrate our nation. There are a couple of things that I would like to share with you as we do prepare for this time. Um, First off, Wednesday we will be having a service for Paul. So uh, that will be taking place at 2 o'clock. Melanie, is that wrong? 11 o'clock? Thank you guys. (laughs) At 11 o'clock we will be having a service for Paul. And then tell me about the reception. Is there a reception or anything? um, Receiving? Light lunch. lunch. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you all. So if you are able, um, I think it is only appropriate for us to come together as a church to celebrate the life of Paul Skoko and all that he has done here in Georgetown and specifically here within our congregation. You are going to be getting information that the Stephen Ministry will be sending out here shortly. If you look back in the, or look over on the announcement section at the bottom, you'll see uh, they are in the process of reorganizing and relaunching with the purpose of better meeting the needs of our congregation. So they're going to be sending out a survey that will be coming out on July the 7th, and you'll be able to get those surveys in the church office Uh, These surveys will help them come to a better understanding of where the needs in the church lie and how the Stephen Ministry Program uh, can better respond and help our congregation with their needs. So just wanted to let you be aware of that. Make sure to take that opportunity to have your voice shared. Uh, While you're over looking at that side, just be aware of the upcoming meetings that we have. You know, we have our quarterly meetings This July, we have a number of those meetings that we held. So finance, SBRC, and church council will all be meeting this month, and the information is on our announcement section. With that, friends, I invite you to stand now. As we enter into this time of worship, we begin with our opening prayer. Let us pray together. O Heavenly Father, you are the source of all our blessings. We thank you for the freedom to gather this morning in worship of your holy name. We thank you for the liberty we enjoy as citizens of this country. And we thank you for every man and woman who have offered themselves to the service of protecting that liberty. May our united voices declare the glory of your name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to call to your attention that we will sing verses 1, 4, and 5.
may be seated, and I invite the children at this time, if they'd like to make their way and follow Cassie Joe for Children's Church. And as they are making their way out, I'll invite the Bolins to come forward. And when you're done, you can come join us as well. Gary? Do we have Gary with us? Oh, he's already coming around. All right, I was about to say. Y'all can just come and stand. We have the great blessing today of being able to welcome some new members into our church. Here he comes. Let me start down here with Ken and Cheryl. They are coming from Mount Pleasant. They have recently... Uh, purchased some uh, some property in Georgetown area and they are in the process of moving towards this area and we are so thrilled they have been worshiping with us close to a year now is that right and uh, been making that trip up from Mount Pleasant and but we've loved having y'all come and be a part of our ministry and our programs and our services and now to have y'all formally come and join us we're so thrilled to have you as part of this congregation and of course Y'all know the Sparks, Gary and Melody. Uh, They have also been with us now a little over a year. And um, she is our pianist. And he is, what, 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 are you a tenor or a? Tenor. I'm a melody. Yeah, I understand. (laughs) He's, he's that big voice that we hear coming out of the choir and he belongs to Melody. But nonetheless, we are so grateful for what y'all have already brought to this congregation and now to have y'all join us as uh, formal members. We're just thrilled to have everyone uh, come and be a part of this continued ministry here at Duncan. So I have two very quick quick questions for you. And if the congregation would like, you can turn to number 38 in the hymnal. You'll have your response coming following 16, but we're going to start at 14. So as members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, and this is for you all, I will. And to both couples, as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? If so, I will. Now, members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, to confirm their hope, and to perfect them in love. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we do give you thanks for this occasion and for the reception of these new members into our congregation. Lord, we give you thanks as well for the favor in which you have shown Duncan for the entirety of our congregation and for the blessing that we have received in being able to be in not just ministry, but to live alongside one another, to support and encourage and inspire one another, and to see our congregation grow by four this morning, we give you thanks, knowing that we are growing closer to you as we grow closer to one another. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon all of us and upon this congregation here at Duncan, that we may continue to witness to the truth of your love revealed through Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. And at the end of the service today, this will be a little bit hard for Melody, but if y'all don't mind uh, going to the the narthex, and uh, that way y'all can welcome them. All right, thank y'all so much. We're so glad to have you guys. Our first lesson this morning comes from the 30th Psalm, 
I invite you to hear this prayer of the psalmist. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up, and you did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol and restored to life from among those gone down to the pit. So sing praises to the Lord, O his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. And as for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain, and you hid your face. I was dismayed. But to you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. For you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Are there any prayer requests that you would like to lift up this morning before we enter into our time of prayer together? Well, we trust that our Lord hears the prayers of our lips and the prayers of our hearts. May the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we come here week after week with the very intention of giving you the praise that you are due, of thanking you, praising you, and glorifying you, for you are a good and gracious God. And our blessings are abundant. This morning, we gather together once more to give you thanks and to praise your name above every other name. But we also come together with the special intention of giving you thanks for the blessing that we all share in being citizens of this country. For, Lord, we enjoy a freedom, a liberty that others do not. In fact, we were all able to come here this morning to give praise to you without fear of any consequence. That is a blessing, Lord, that we don't take for granted And we pray, O God, that we would reserve that as holy and sacred. Lord, we give you thanks for all those men and women who have worked, labored, and served this country, and especially for those who have fought to protect our freedom. As we enter into the next few months and even into the next few years, we pray, O God, for those who serve our country, whether it be in the local, state, or national government, that by your Spirit you would work to move them and to move their hearts. To bring all of us closer together. 
that we can once more enjoy and celebrate the gift of unity that this country stands for. And then in all things, O oh God, as we go about our day, as we go about our work, and as we go about our lives, we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would work within us as individuals and especially as a community of faith to be a living witness to the truth of your love that you have shed abroad in our heart through Jesus Christ. May his name be raised and may you alone be glorified. For we offer this prayer in the name of your Son, who taught all of us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for you. Amen. I invite you now to continue in the spirit of worship through the giving of your tithes and your offerings. We give thanks for these gifts and for all of our blessings. Amen. Thank you, sir.
I'd like to invite you to stand in honor of the reading of the gospel. This morning we'll be reading from the 10th chapter of Luke. Now after this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. Now Jesus said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, and your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <clears throat> Cassie, Joe, and I were talking the other day, and we had just passed one another in the hall, and I said, what have you been up to? And she said, oh, I just finished meeting with Gary. For those of you who have not yet met Gary, he is our church steward and helps keep our facility the way that it is, but he also helps set up for all events and programs and different ministries that we have going on. So I said, well, what have you been up to, Cassie Joe? And she said, I've just been meeting with Gary about preparations for this month. Can we just take a pause for a moment and think about the implication of what I just said? She didn't ask him a question. It wasn't a quick email or a text that said, can you put a couple of tables up for this one thing that we've got going on? It required for a full conversation to be had between our Christian education department and our church steward where they could sit down and look over the calendar at all the different things coming up in the next four weeks so that they could make a game plan for how to maneuver and provide all the logistics to pull off the different events that we have going on. So when I heard that, I was so excited. That's what I like hearing. That it requires a sit-down conversation to make this place that we've been blessed with ready for what's about to happen next. The truth is, we've got a lot of stuff coming up just in the next few weeks. I know that the Nurture Group has their annual ice cream social. We're looking forward to that being had. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to start our summer movie series, but not just showing movies, the kitchen angels will be back at work and they'll be providing a fellowship meal on that night. In addition to the children's ministry taking our harbor cruise and going out to the lighthouse and looking for seashells and some other things, we've got our 
adult group that's planning to go to the theater and watch a show and have dinner. Our youth group's got a string of activities that they've got planned in the next couple of weeks. VBS is in the midst of being organized. That kicks off at the end of this month. Cassie Jo came to me the other day. She said, Pastor, you're not going to believe it. We have 80 kids already signed up for VBS. And she said, what are we going to do? <laughs> and I said, we're going to go find another 20 kids. <laughs> There's so much that's already being done. This church is blessed because we have so many laborers. We have laborers in Christian ed. We have laborers in music. We have, we have laborers in the kitchen. We have laborers in different meeting. You know, you've got your different committees. There are laborers scattered throughout this church that are busy at work. And you know, the reality is not a single one of our laborers knows the extent to what their work will bring about. Not a single one. None of our laborers know the extent that their efforts, what their efforts will do for the kingdom of God. They don't know in the midst of the preparations that they're making, they don't know the effect that it will have. And that's okay. In fact, that's what makes the work all the more special, all the more powerful, that despite an awareness of the outcome, that they're already in the process of working, of laboring, in anticipation for what God will do. That's what it means to be a laborer, to have been called to make preparations, trusting that the outcome will be upon God. We're simply called to be faithful in our service by offering ourselves through the planning and the organizing and the implementation of different ministries. What occurs at them, the heart change that comes out of them, that's not our responsibility. That's what God does. Our responsibility is to just go before and to make those preparations that will allow others to encounter the love of God through Jesus Christ. Our message for the last two weeks, if you've been here with us, <clears throat> Our message for the last two weeks is focused on a selection of scripture from the ninth chapter of Luke. And in the sermon series, Destination Unknown, we've really <clears throat> taken a closer look at the instructions of Jesus and what he's had to say and the implications of those teachings for our understanding of discipleship. And if you were present, you will realize that one of the emphasis points that we had was that there is a necessity an absolute necessity for us to move onward, to be compelled to move onward with the very message that God has entrusted into our care through Jesus Christ. Now, our scripture lesson for the day immediately follows the lessons that we talked about for the last two weeks. And as we turn back to this scripture this morning, what I want us to come to a realization about is that God did not send out these 72 with the purpose of bringing about a harvest. Quite the opposite. He sent them ahead of him to make preparations for the work that God was already and would be doing in that space at just the right time. These are the two verses that I want us to really hone in on. And I want you to hear them again. It's the first and second verse of chapter 10. Where we learn that after this, <clears throat> so after all that we talked about for the last two weeks, 
After this, the Lord appointed 70 others, and he sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. There are three things that I want us to pay close attention to here in these verses. And the first of those points is that it is the Lord who calls. These laborers, these 70, they did not conjure up a call. It wasn't their own manifestation of, hey, I think I feel compelled to go and do this very thing that I want to go and do. No, it was the Lord who gave them this instruction and therefore authenticated their very calling, authenticated their appointment to the task that they were about to do. And that's the first thing that we need to realize. They weren't just out there making something up on their own. Their participation in the continued ministry of Jesus Christ was something that the Lord had placed upon them. They were authorized. The second thing is that it was the Lord who sent them, right? The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him. It is the Lord who calls people, who is also the one who determines the timing of the ministry that they will provide. And for me, that's a really important point. There are going to be times, whether it's us as individuals or us collectively as a church, when we are called to follow Jesus. And we will assume that position where we are behind him, following his footprints. But there are going to be appointed times where Jesus calls us to go ahead of him. Says it sends him ahead of him. The literal translation is before his face. So yes, there are times we are following behind him, while there are other times we are before his face. But if we are before his face, we still share his direction. And if we share his direction, whether we are behind him or going before him, we are still in line with his vision. It is Jesus who determines the timing of when we follow and when we go ahead. But we also must recognize that there is a purpose to what we are being called to do. It says that he sends these 70 on ahead of him to the villages and the places where he himself intended to go. These are the individuals that are to go ahead and to make the preparations so that when Jesus arrives, the work can be accomplished. And the same is true for you and for me. We maintain our alliance or our alignment with the vision of Jesus' ministry. At times we follow, at other times we go before, but even still when we go before, it's not to do the work that we see fit, but rather it is to make preparations so that when Jesus arrives, those can encounter him. And then in verse 2, there's this strange agrarian imagery that is used. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Establishing that harvest is not the responsibility of the 70. The harvest, that's the responsibility of God. That's what God does. And it just so happens that it's plentiful. That, it are, that there is an abundance of to what God accomplishes. The problem is not the harvest. The problem is that there is a shortage of laborers. The harvest is plentiful and the time to reap the harvest has come, but more workers are needed to complete the work. 
I'm no farmer. I know that we have farmers in our congregation, but one of the things that I am aware of is that there comes a time when what has been planted, it's time to harvest that which has been planted, and in order to do it, because there's such a short window of time and there's a sense of urgency about it, that they hire on additional help to harvest the product. And the same is true in this sense. There is a sense of urgency. The time has come. You see, the kingdom of God, it's being built. That's not the responsibility of the 70. They are called to serve Jesus by going before him and making the preparations to the preaching and the teaching and the casting out of demons and the healings and all the other miracles that go on so that others may be ready to receive Jesus Christ when he arrives. You know, we share a blessing, one that is extended to every single Christian. When we entered into a life of discipleship, we were invited to participate in the ongoing ministry of Jesus. It's a blessing to be able to not just be a part of it, but to witness the work that God does through the name of Jesus. And the way that we participate is by offering our time, by offering our talents, by utilizing our resources and our tithes. We give of ourself in that way. But we still look back to this to set the example for how our participation unfolds. We are called. It's not something that we're just conjuring up. Because we carry the name of Jesus, we have been called and authorized to this appointment that we share. But we've also been instructed. In the same way that Jesus sins, we are told when to serve. In the same way that Jesus says to go before his face, we are informed how to serve. And just as he sends them to the places where he intends to go, we are told where to serve. The point being simply that Jesus empowers his disciples and he still empowers us to serve as his representatives through our work of preparation. The outcome, not our responsibility. The work that precedes, that's our privilege. That's our blessing. My friends... We must realize that the harvest, that's not up to you and to me. But it is abundant. And as people, but more so as a congregation, we have this blessed opportunity before us. And we're already in the midst of doing it. That we get to just create the space to make the preparations to prepare to organize and to implement opportunities spaces where people can come where we prayerfully trust that they can encounter the love of God in Jesus Christ what a blessing that is for us What a blessing it is that we already have so many people, so many laborers here. So don't let up. Accept that call and be motivated by the purpose that each of you share. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand and join me as we affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ.
forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite you to turn in your hymnal. I've got to find where I put my hymnal. Oh. I invite you to turn to number 13 in your hymnals. We prepare now for the sacrament of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, for by the baptism of his suffering, his death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. For this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this all. For this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so... In remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. May this gracious God, you pour out your Holy Spirit us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, and make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your spirit make us one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the body of Christ. It is broken for us that we might be made whole. This is the blood of Christ shed for us for the forgiveness of sin. This is not my table, nor is this Duncan's table, nor is this the table of the Methodist Church. We believe that this is the table of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this table is open to anyone who earnestly repents of their sin and desires to be in relationship with God by way of faith in his Son, Jesus Christ. For that reason, this table is open and you are invited. We will be... uh, Receiving communion by way of intinction today. The ushers will come and they will bring you forward at your time. If anyone is unable to come forward, just let your usher know and they will signal to me and I will be happy to bring uh, the elements to you. You are more than welcome to kneel at the altar for a time of prayer or to have a moment of silence or prayer in your pew. Come, this table is open. First, I need the people who are helping me. Thank you. 
You want both?
in your hymnal 698, God of the ages, whose almighty hand leads forth in beauty, all of the star of Amen. Go forth now in the confidence of the Holy Spirit to make known the truth that has been entrusted to us by God through his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>